Hey, I'm Herald Sports writer Manny Navarro. And I'm Andre Fernandez. We're here at Cypress Bay High School inside Coach Guandolo's office filming the Gridiron Report. All right, Dre, so last week St. Thomas Aquinas goes into New Jersey as the number one team in the country. They come out 24-7 losers to Bosco. It wasn't, even pre wasn't pretty at all. No, I mean, with the exception of maybe one play, 86-yard touchdown pass that looked nice to Sam Bruce, that was it. Their offense got completely dominated up front. St. Thomas, their defense played well in the first half. That's why it was a close game, and eventually they got worn down as well. Probably the ugliest game I've seen them play in a long, long time. I don't remember them playing a game this ugly in the time that I've been covering them, to, to be quite honest. And they're going to have to rebound quick because here comes Miramar, the team that's actually owned them the last three years in Broward County. So the recovery has to come real soon for those Raiders. Focus now turns to winning a state championship in 7A. I still think they're going to do that. But yeah. big game this week against Miramar to get back on their feet. Speaking of big games down here in Dade County, Columbus, Coral Gables, Dre, I picked Gables to lose this game. You picked Gables to win this game, and I was right. By one point, though, and they will have a rematch. <laughs> Even they were saying they're going to have a rematch, and really it came down to it. For Gables, it was unfortunate. A blocked extra point ended up giving them, giving Columbus that edge to come back, but you got to give credit to the Explorers. I mean, that defense looked great. Beginning of the year, I said the problem, you looked at week one against South Day, the defense was the issue, and I told you back then, I'm like, that's not going to be an issue for very long. That's what they do best. Now the defense is rolling. They got to give that ball to Ivan Smith a lot more the rest of the season. That is a game-breaking running back that could play anywhere in either county. Yeah, he was really impressive. Scored both touchdowns, I think, in that game. Definitely. Right, for Columbus. Yeah. yeah, definitely impressive. 80-yarder for the winner. Miramar uh, absolutely destroys Plantation. I'm beginning to worry a little bit about Plantation team, but it was nice to see Miramar uh, bounce back after that Heritage win. Yeah, I mean, they were obviously very, very, you know, disappointed. I rate you pick a word. After that loss to Heritage, they felt like, you know, if they had made a little bit better adjustments, they could have won that game and hung on to the lead. But they came out, did what they were supposed to do, dominate Plantation. Now they get their chance to prove to everybody they're still a big-time contender, in, not only in Class 8A, but maybe they deserve a national ranking of some sort if they can win this game this week. All right. A uh, couple of other games. South Dade knocks off American. is another one where I picked right, you pick wrong. I, I love reminding them that every, every single week. There was those four the week before that went the <laughs> other way, right? Okay, just saying. <laughs> but um, yeah, again, I mean, I don't. I, I thought American American is improved. Let's be honest, they are. But you can't win a football game when you get four turnovers and do absolutely nothing with that. And that's what happened. They had zero points off those tur those South Dade turnovers, and that's why they really lost this game. And South Dade, who'd have thought two weeks in a row at Traz Powell, way away from home, they'd come up with big victories. And now this team is looking like they are pretty much just them and Killian to try and win that district again. Remember, South Dade learned how to win last year. They won the state championship. Yeah, oh, absolutely. They it's remember a, it's a new group. Bit of that. It's a new group <laughs> that's learning to pick up after those veterans, and by the end of the season, I think they'll be in that same position. All right, Miami Springs beats Edison 19-6. Springs continues to play well. Yeah, Miami Springs, I mean, you know, 3-0 and start, first time in a while for those guys. The Golden Hawks are doing great. I mean, they, some question the schedule, but I think little by little, They'll keep racking up these victories, and by the end of the season, obviously, it's going to come down to those games against American and Matter to see if they can be a playoff team again. Uh, Killian absolutely destroys North Miami Beach, 38 to nine. We talked about them in South Day a little while ago. Let's move on. HML beats Hialeah, 34 nothing to win the T Trophy. This is a big game in Hialeah every year. Yeah, it is. I mean, Hialeah's really fallen. I mean, I feel bad that they're in such dire straits right now. This is a playoff team that's not going anywhere right now. But good for HML because that team looked like. They were going to show some improvement this season after some miserable years the last couple of years. So let's see how far the Trojans can take it. Again, it's that same district with Miami Springs and those teams where if they win the right games, maybe a playoff spot. All right, Ferguson beats my Braddock Bulldogs 21-6. to Yeah. Are they the runner-up in this district, or could they be? They will push Belen, I'm telling you right now. I think it's them and Belen, and you never know with the sleeper team that we, we talked about the last few weeks, Sunset. Sunset yeah. It's going to be an interesting mix with those three in the middle of it. Braddock's not far behind, although that was a damaging loss, though. I think that, that one's going to hurt them down the stretch. All right, last game, Booger T crushes Carroll City. They, you know, we knew this was going to be the case, uh, but now Booger T, I mean, number one in the state overall now that St. Thomas has dropped off. I think, it, you know, it's them. And there's some good teams in Texas that we talked about before that are in the way right now. But if Booker T, all they can do is just stay on course, you know, keep that winning streak alive. Obviously, that's another goal. They want to eclipse that 37-game winning streak down the road. But if they run the table and they win a state title and they do it impressively, 
no reason to think they're not in the top, at least in the top two or three nationwide once again. Should be back to back national champs. Could I mean, be. Yeah. A lot of, lot of tough road games. All right. That wraps up our weekend review. We'll look ahead to this week's games.